Can I marry you? Trudy, bitch. Trudy! I'm too tough for you, dude. <laughs> So The Midnight Gospel is a new show from Adventure Time creator, writer, producer, director, Pendleton Ward. And this is a adult Adventure Time, or at least that's kind of what I expected it to be, what I've been hearing from this show, what it was going to be. An adult version of Adventure Time, which is honestly one of my favorite animated programs adventure time i absolutely love that show i love how silly and goofy it is but i love how it handles darker themes i love the world building in it i love the characters it's just a really endearing fun entertaining show i've got a joke too <laughs> what wears a dark suit is completely evil and is about to suck out all your souls your mama that's right I'm your mama. So essentially, the show is about a guy named Clancy who has a multiverse computer that puts his consciousness into a different multiverse, into an avatar that then goes to a multiverse and interviews somebody in that multiverse, in a dying planet, on a dying planet. And that's pretty much the gist of the show, is just this guy named Clancy, played by Duncan Trussell, who's a real-life podcaster, goes and interviews people on these planets, or in the multiverse. And the show is basically just two characters that talk for the entire 20-some-odd-minute episode. Merging with Simulator in three, two... What? And every episode seems to f have a different theme to it, depending on what or who he's interviewing. And so you get these long-winded existential conversations about forgiveness, about talking, about magic, death, drugs. You get these in-depth conversations with these people who are real people in real life, all while these super fantastical images and worlds are going on in the background. And it makes for one of the most unique experiences I think I've ever had watching a television show. I mean, it's essentially a podcast with a visualizer. That's kind of the best way I can describe it. What does death look like to you? I think we need to simplify this. But don't get me wrong, the visualizer here is more than just colors on a screen. Uh, most of the time, the episode or the visuals kind of, or at least loosely relate to what the characters are talking about. And there's some dialogue that kind of gets the conversation going into what it's going to be for the rest of the episode. So you have, like for example, episode two is talking to this a uh, 60 some, uh, some odd year old lady who talks about death and talking about death. And the entire episode is set in a world that is inhabited by clowns who are ch chomping up these dog deer things. And most of the episode is th these people talking, but they had already been chopped up. So they're just blobs of meat going through this long sewer tract and just talking about the finality of death, about talking about death, about not being scared about death. And it makes for such a surreal, odd experience. And one that I honestly couldn't get enough. When I started the show, I couldn't stop. Are you a metaphor? But what I love about the show is that the even though the conversation between the two characters is the focal point, the uh, reason it exists, it isn't just that. There is actually a, a fair amount of thought that seems to be going on in the visualizer aspects of the show too, because not only is it an, ad an adult show, there's cursing, um, there's existential conversations, but there's also horrific violence. Like people get torn in half in this show, zombies bite people's intestines out. Like it's, it's absurd and incredibly violent, but it kind of, really works. That juxtaposition between this really engrossing deep conversation and then watching a zombie tear apart a human being in animated form 
creates such an interesting dynamic where you're getting this this conversation and it's kind of stimulating and then you watch this horrific violence and it's such a bizarre juxtaposition that it's really funny and i think that is incredibly intentional too plus i don't think it's a coincidence that in this episode about the drug addiction we have a zombie outbreak which is infecting this whole world which ties into what they're talking about is in terms of drug addiction it's a nice allegory for exactly what they're talking about and this is a running theme throughout the entire show if the entire show was just people talking then it would be very easy to say, why not just listen to a podcast? Why, wouldn't, why would I watch the show that is essentially just a podcast condensed and truncated with just with visuals going on? And the show cleverly mixes in both visual humor and gags with the characters. It, it makes new dialogue so that it kind of seamlessly blends in between the conversation and the world that these characters are inhabiting. Just be here now. And this brings me to another interesting aspect of the show, which is the main character, Clancy, who is actually a character. And that is the most shocking part of the show for me. It isn't just visuals and a conversation. There is actually both world building going on in this universe that they have, that Pendleton Ward and his team has uh, created, but there's also some in-depth character writing for Clancy. After he gets shot out of his simulation or before he goes into it, you get these little dialogue snippets between him and his computer that is the one sending him into these simulations or between him and his sister or between him and one of his subscribers. And you really get a good sense of who Clancy is as a person, at least in the show. Because the computer at multiple points is like, you should do this, have you read about this, I need updates, or I'm gonna start failing, blah, 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 blah. And he always like zones it out. And when his sister calls and wants money because he you got a loan from her to buy the multiverse thing and didn't pay her back, and he, he just is like, oh, I'm gonna be an interviewer and make money off that, and then I'll pay you back when, it, when that gets successful. But, it, but he has like two subscribers. There are beautiful, wondrous worlds full of intelligent beings with stories to tell. And I'm gonna interview them and put my interviews online and make a bunch of money to suck my dick. There's also a interesting meta quality to the show where some characters re refer to Clancy as Duncan, who is the actual podcaster. And there are parts when it actually cuts to the podcast, which seems to be saying that this show is a reflection of Duncan himself, which is a very interesting idea. So the man that the show paints is this delusional person who is hiding from his problems with these interviews he's doing. He believes that both he's going to get money and be uh, emotionally satisfied interviewing these people, and then that will be good enough for everybody else around him as well. But that's not the case because everyone else is also living their own lives. So him burying his head in the sand, literally, in the show, is not helping anybody, and much less himself. And that is, the most fascinating part of the show to me because I didn't expect the character to have any character. I really expected it to just be this guy goes to a bunch of different worlds and interviews people and that's kind of where it ends. But no, he's actually a complicated character that is very relatable and understandable and I really got why he was doing the things what he was doing, what his motivations were, and all of that great stuff. It's really a really nice show. I don't want to spoil too much because it hasn't been out that long and I don't think many people have watched it yet, but if you haven't, you should watch it. At least watch the first episode. They're 20 minutes long and it, it kind of goes by really quick because you get really engaged in both the deep conversation that these people are having and in this fantastical world imagery and animation. It's one of the most unique experiences I, I've ever had in film or TV at all. It's so incredibly special. I definitely recommend it. Yeah, definitely watch this show. It's great. <laughs> Oh!